Okay, I'm just gonna go over some small prerequisites before we get started on the bot. So to begin with, we're gonna need to install node.js, which will basically let us run our JavaScript code outside of the browser. And then we need some sort of uh, text editor, and my choice for this would be Visual Studio Code. And I would recommend all of you to install that. And I will leave links in the description to how you can install these. I actually have the links up here, so. You can check those out if you don't know how to install this. And let's get on with the tutorial. All right, so let's get started. So to begin with, you'll just find a place on your computer where you want to create the bot, basically. And so once you're there, you right click new and create a new folder and you can name it whatever you want. So I'm gonna name mine osubot-1. And once you've done that, you can just right click it and click open with code. And that should open up your code editor in that specific folder. So I have it here, I'm gonna drag it over. And what we then will do is up here, click terminal, new terminal to open up an integrated terminal into the code editor. So we will be using that a little bit throughout the tutorial. And to begin with, we will have to initialize our project. And to do that, we type in this one command that is npm init. And so it will ask us a few questions here that we will answer. So package name, I'll just keep that as the default. So enter, version, enter, description, and also bot. Entry point, index.js. I'm actually gonna change this to app. JS. And this is just pure preference. So this is just what we will be naming our JavaScript file. So app.js will be good. Test command, don't need that. Git repository, don't need that. Keywords, don't need that either. License, yep, sounds good. And then you just type in yes. And so that will create this package.json file for us. So that's perfect. And then we will install a package called bonshow.js. So to do that, we type npm install bonshow.js. And then we just wait for that to install. And so this will actually put this package into our package.json here. You'll see it update as soon as it's done. And there it's done. And now we can see we have a dependencies object here where it says boncho.js, and so that's perfect. So now we have everything we need to get started. So then we'll, we will just click here, create a new file, and call it app.js. And so this will be the JavaScript file where we will be coding the bot, basically. And so to start off, we need to import this package that we just installed. And to do that, we will type const, Bunch of JS and re equals require bunch of JS. So this basically just imports everything from that package and so, so that we can use it in our project. And the next thing we need to do is to get our Boncho IRC username and password. And I will be blurring my credentials out here, but you can get yours through this link right here which will be in the description of this video too. And once you have those, we need to put those in our code. All right, so now we need to put our IRC credentials into our code. And so the way you would do this is you'd create two variables, one called username, which you'd set equal to your OSU username with uh, these citation marks around it. And you'd also create a variable called password and set that equal to that IRC password that you found on that website I just showed you. So this is not the password you log into your OSO account with, but rather the IRC password. So make sure you do that. Now I won't be doing this as that would show you guys my credentials. So I have instead created a little secret.js file here with my credentials that I will be importing into this file. So I'll just do that real quick. So I will be importing my username and password.
from secret, just like that. And then we can get started. So to begin with, we need an actual bond show client so that we can start connecting to bond show and answering people in chat. So let's create a variable called client, and we will set that equal to bond show JS actually new bond show JS dot bond show client. And in here we put an object which will include our username and our password. So in here we will put username and set that equal to that username variable. And then we will put the password and set that equal to the password variable that we declared. And so now we will start creating a little function. And so how we do that is we create a function called start osu bot set that equal to an asynchronous function and the first thing we will do in this function is connect to bond show and so our client here has a function on it that we can use called connect so we will create a little try catch block here and we will await client.connect. And so this will, if our credentials are correct, it will connect us to Boncho. So that's perfect. And if we fail, we will end up in this catch block here. And if we end up up here, we will just console.error the error. So this will show us in the terminal window what went wrong, basically. So that's good. And so if we succeed, we will console.log um, osu bot connected. Dot, dot, dot. So if we now run this code, actually, one thing, we define this function here, but we actually need to call this function. So right below here, we will just call the function just like this. And now, if we run this code, which we do by typing node and then the name of the JavaScript file, so app.js. And so if everything goes correctly, yeah, we can see osubot connector. That's a typo, I'll change that. But basically it, it worked and we are now connected. So now we can start handling commands and basically build our chatbot. So, the first thing we will do now is we basically have to subscribe to an event on the client, which is called PM. And how we do that is we type client.on. And here you can see all the different events that we can subscribe to. And the one we want to subscribe to is PM because we want to respond whenever someone sends a PM to us. So we type that there. And then the next argument is a function that we define and we will actually make this asynchronous so we have to type async here and in the parameters of this function we get an object that includes the message that was sent to us and the user that's sent the message so that we know who sent the message to us and so these things will be very useful for us and now we define the function in here. What will happen when someone PMs us? So the first thing we have to check is, I will put a little comment here. Check if message was sent by ourselves. So this is something we want to handle. So that if it was sent by ourselves, we don't want to do anything. So if user dot irc username that's the username of the person that is equal to our username variable that we set before then we will just return from this function immediately and not do anything of the things that we will write below this point so that's good the next thing we need to check is for a command prefix so usually when you create a chat bot if you want to let people use commands, you usually let them put an exclamation mark before the command 
or a dot or something like that. And we will be using a dot, I think. So I will actually define a variable for that, a global variable up here. So I will name that, I will name that prefix and set that equal to a dot so that we have that right there. It's perfect. So we will check for command prefix. So if message, and since message is a string, we can check the indexes of that string. So if the first character in that string is not equal to a dot, then we will return. So if the first letter isn't a dot, they have not typed a command to us and we do not want to respond from the bot. All right, so now that we know that the user has typed a dot as the first character in their message, we wanna check if they actually typed a command. So to get what command they're sending, we will create a variable called command. And to get the command, we will basically split up the string that they sent. So message dot split and we will split that on a blank space to separate the words that they sent. And then we will just take the first word and we will also turn that into a lowercase string just to make sure in case they sent any uppercase letters inside the word. So now we have the command that they're trying to send. And so now we will actually start to create the different commands that we will have available in our bot. So. We will create a switch statement. We will switch on the command that they sent. And in here, we will create one little case for each command. So to begin with, I will be creating a um, hello command. So a case with the prefix, the dot, plus hello. So if they type dot hello, this code will run. And so what we will do here is we will return, await, we will take the user that sent the message to us and we will send a message to them. And this is how you do that. So up here we get the user that sent a message to us and now we will take them and send a message back. And in here we can put whatever we want. So actually I will be creating a string by using the backticks so that I can easily include variables inside the string. So I will just type hello there, dollar, and then uh, curly braces and user.irc username. And so this, if you type dot hello to the bot now, it should respond with hello there and then the username of the person that sent that message. And so now we can actually try that. So we will restart the bot. So first press control C to stop it. And then we will type node app.js. And now that was the bot is connected. And so now to test this, we would need someone else messaging us. And I actually have an IRC client installed here and as you can see, I've done some testing here before, but um, yeah, my friend has been nice. So I can, I actually connected to IRC with his account just so that I could test this right here. And so now I'm actually messaging myself here, which the bot is connected to my accounts. And so if we type dot hello and we wait just a little bit, we see hello there, Halo Stalker, which is his username. And so that works. And if we type anything else, we don't get anything back. And if we type dot and something that doesn't exist in our switch, nothing happens either. So that's perfect. That's just how we want it. And so that's it. Now we have a functioning uh, chat bot on Osu. And it only took us basically 30 lines of code. And so now you basically set, and now you can keep creating as many commands as you want here. So we could create a little like more complex command, I guess you could say. So I will be creating uh, a command called day, which will send back a string with what day it is to the user. So we take the prefix, the dot plus 
day. So if they type dot day, this code will run right here. So to get what day it is right now, uh, we can actually, I won't be going into detail how exactly this code works, but what am I doing? Date dot to locale string. And then the first argument will be en dash us. And the second one will be an object with a weekday of long. And so what this code does is basically gives us what weekday it is right now. And then we will send that back to the user. So return await user dot send message, just like before. And we will send that back to them, day. And now we will restart the bot again. So node app.js in the terminal. And that should hopefully start the bot back up. Yep, there we go. And now if we go back into the IRC client, obviously you guys can test this in game if you don't wanna use an IRC client, that's totally fine. I mean, that's how you'd use the bot anyways. So let's try this out. Let's try dot hello again, just to make sure that everything's okay. And there we go, hello there, Halo Stalker. And then we will try dot day. And we get by Wednesday, which is the day that I am making this video, 4th of December. And so that works. And now you can keep creating commands here, as many as you want, and that's super cool. So that's basically it for this video. And let me know if you guys want me to build more on this. What we could do is basically we could connect this to the OSU API and get information about users such as their favorite maps, their best PP scores, their level and anything like that. So that could be pretty cool. So if you guys want to see that, let me know if you wanna see something else. Just let me know and I will consider it. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you had fun doing this and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.